Okay, welcome. Welcome to a, another One Yorkshire event. It's me, Johnny Ross from Fleet Marketing. I'm here to talk to you about Google Analytics today. We're going to be looking at Google Analytics. for It's for beginners and intermediates this session. So really welcome and thank you for joining. Please do use the chat to network if you're wanting to. Share your LinkedIn profiles, your website URLs, Instagram, usernames, whatever you want to share. Um, please do use the chat. Please do use the Q&A to ask any questions. Let me bring up some uh, slides. There we go. That's me, my Twitter name, at Johnny Ross. How are we? How is it going for you today? Let's just see something in the chat. Change it to uh, panelists and attendees so that I can see. Out of 10, how are you feeling? 10, really excited. One, who? Google Analytics. <laughs> or oh, we've got a nine. If you change your uh, chat box to panelists and attendees, then everyone will see your answers and not just me. Laura's an eight. A seven. Excited, but Wi-Fi is rubbish today. Some of you that joined early will have seen that I left my camera and mic on by mistake. You were welcome to join my call. <laughs> uh, hello. Hello, hello. And I've no, I've no idea a nine. Hmm. Um, Google Analytics, where are you on Google Analytics? So zero, never used it before. Uh, one, just to let you know, real beginner. 10, advanced, you know it inside out. Uh, where would you say you are on Google Analytics? It was years ago, a three, two, three, one. We've got any experts? Zeros, twos, threes, never used. Wow. Okay, we've got some, right, it'll take me a, a, a couple of minutes to get you all up to speed then. You're going to be Google Analytics experts by the end of this. Do you have any questions so far? I know we've not started, but what are you hoping to get out of this session? What are you hoping to learn? Because now's your time, and I want you to ask lots of questions. We're going to do a live demo. We're here till one o'clock. As I said, thank you for joining me. My name's Johnny Ross digital marketing strategist at the award-winning digital marketing agency, Fleet Marketing. Just to give you a quick backstory, qualified optician gives me lots of credibility to, to be here talking about Google Analytics, doesn't it? Not really. Uh, we had a uh, uh, an e-commerce site selling sunglasses back in 99, the biggest e-commerce sunglass e-tailer in the UK. We knew that from our buying power, bigger than Shade Station, bigger than Debenhams. Uh, we were uh, this was for about four or five years. We were at the top of Google for everything to do with sunglasses, designer sunglasses, Armani sunglasses, Bolle sunglasses, Oakley sunglasses, Chanel sunglasses. James says, doesn't even know how to turn it on or check it. Never used it before. That's Google Analytics, I assume. Uh, I'm going to come on to that. Uh, and um, we basically were on page one, top of page one for everything. And what happened was that in 2004, sales dropped, didn't really know why, took us a month to realize that we'd been pushed to page seven of Google. And you know what? We didn't look at Google Analytics back then as much. Nowadays, I look at it every day. But back then, I probably only looked at maybe once a month, if that. So it took us a month to realize that we'd been pushed to page seven of Google. And no one ever goes to page seven of Google. Anyway, cutting a huge long story short, 18 months later, we were still on page seven, found a guy in New York, ridiculous price hourly rate he was but within two weeks got us back to page one learned a huge amount was a a, a a minority shareholder of the business needed to invest senior partner didn't want to so i went off to help businesses understand what search engine optimization was all about and along with that was of course google analytics so um matthew's already asked a question what's the difference between google analytics and webmaster tools webmaster tools has been rebranded it's now called search console google search console highly recommend that you use uh, Google Search Console. The reason being is that you can't just pick up the phone to uh, Google and start talking to them about your search engine optimization or even your Google Analytics. You can talk to them about your pay-per-click or, or your AdWords or your, your paid advertising, but they're not interested in any other conversation. But the key thing is that Google Search Console is a place to be able to 
communicate in a way with Google. Yes, okay, it's not a real human being, um, but you can uh, you, you can communicate in Google's way with Google. And they communicate a huge amount too. So Search Console is basically, this is what Google knows about your website. This is what Google thinks of your website. This is what Google can tell you about your website. And it's a and it's a place to tell Google things as well. So for example, Google don't look at this section of the website or this section's for the UK, this section's for France, whatever it might be. There's lots of uh, communication in there. And I'd highly recommend setting up Google Webmaster, to Google <laughs> Search Console, used to be called Webmaster Tools. You can then integrate that and tie it up to Google Analytics so that you can see Google Analytics data in Search Console and Search Console data in Google Analytics. Let me just take this a step further. So Google Analytics is for seeing what's currently or, or what's gone on on your website. So it's about understanding when visitors come to your website, what happens? What do they do? What do they look at? What devices do they use? How long do they spend? Google Search Console is everything prior to them getting to your website. So Google Search Console tells you what you appear in Google for, what pages appear, what uh, search terms Google shows you for. Whereas Google Analytics shows you what search terms people have actually clicked and got to your website. So Google, uh, and yes, Maria has asked a good question. Is the session recorded? Uh, yes, they absolutely are. Um, I mean, I could repeat this first six minutes if you want, but uh, no, um, the uh, they are absolutely recorded. And uh, it takes me a little while to process all of this. Um, but if it's not this afternoon, it'll be first thing in the morning, you'll receive an email um, and, uh, and it will have a link to this uh, video. So uh, yes, thanks for asking that uh, question, Maria. Um, but um, in terms of uh, Google Analytics, that tells you what's going on on your website. Google Search Console tells you what's happened prior to your website. Hopefully that makes a bit more sense. I'd suggest signing up to both. Um, for the ones that have never used it and the sort of how-to, I'm not going to go, it's really difficult in this session to, to go through everything. Um, and, and I could spend, you know, a long time just showing you the setup. What I'd say is um, is a couple of simple things to help you understand. So the way Google Analytics works is that there's a bit of code that gets added to your entire website, every page of your website. And that bit of code um, acts a bit like a cookie, or it is a cookie, on the person's browser so that the browser can keep note of what's happening and then send that data to Google. And the reason it uses a cookie is because it looks at whether you come back to the website as well. So it, it places a, a little bit of code on a, a local computer as well to be able to say, okay, this person's looked at the website and then 10 days later, they've come back and, and they're now looking at these pages. But how do you implement Google Analytics? Well, literally, you just need to get that bit of code, which I'll talk about in a second, give it to your web developer or find a, an easy way to integrate that code into your website. So depending on what website you've got, there's lots of different ways. It's impossible to tell you that right now but you need to get that code onto your website. And as I said, it would be on every single page of your website. And it's only a very short piece of code. How do you get that code? Well, if you just Google Google Analytics and you sign up, you just need to put your website address. You just need to put your time zone, uh, tick a few boxes, <laughs> um, and it will then give you that bit of that chunk of code. And so you then use that code to either install it yourself or to pass it on to a, a web developer. Uh, Jennifer, in analytics, can I see the journey visually in a heat map? No. Long and short of it. <laughs> um, no, highly recommend Hotjar, hotjar.com. Uh, you could use the free version. And uh, Hotjar is very good at being able to visually see heat maps, see what's going on on your website. It's also a great tool for getting feedback and adding polls and surveys onto your website. Uh, but it's a separate tool. It's not a Google Analytics tool. It's obviously not what we're going to spend time on today. Um, but uh, I would highly recommend having a look at, uh, at Hotjar for that. Wish I was on commission for these things. Um, so what's the objective today? Well, to understand how uh, you can use Google Analytics more strategically to increase your return on investment and to be more strategic with your marketing decisions. It, I, I say this in every webinar, but it's even more important for today's because Google Analytics really doesn't work until you've made it really clear 
what it is you're trying to get your website to do. It's so important. Um, and I'll explain why. So we're not going to spend long on this, but uh, in essence, you need very clear objectives of what your uh, organization, your company is trying to achieve, you know, financial goals. Are you trying to work only four days a week? Is it, you know, are you trying to reduce your hours? What is it exactly you're trying to achieve? And they have to be smart, specific, measurable, agreed, realistic, timely. So in the next three years, we're looking to sell X amount. Uh, you know, that's, the, and, and the look of that is, you know, 100 customers or 10,000 customers, all spending X amount or, you know, three types of customer, they're going to be spending X amount, they're going to be spending Y, they're going to be spending Z. You need that. You really do need that. And then what you've got to work out is, okay, well, how's your website going to help you achieve that? And it, it it's very important that we bottom this out before we get to Google Analytics. So is it that you're wanting people to fill out a contact form? Is it that you're wanting people to watch a video to educate themselves on your products or services? Is it that you want people to subscribe to an email list, to follow you on Twitter, to, um, you know, what is it you want people to do? Do you want people to click the telephone number and contact you? What, what are the things that you want to do? And, and let's write those things down. Because what we need to do is tell Google Analytics that. That's really important. And I'll show you why. Uh, shortly, but it's really important that you have a list of things that you're actually wanting users to do. So it's not, you know, it might be, by the way, it might, I was about to say, it's not just, you know, looking at the website or reading or reading the content. Although to be fair, you can say that actually one of my goals is I want someone to read uh, a blog and I want them to spend at least 45 seconds on the page, or I want them to at least scroll down two thirds of the page. You can dictate that. Um, so, so they may be goals. They probably won't be um, for some of you uh, that are, are more beginners. It'll be filling out a contact form. It'll be clicking an email address, clicking a telephone number, um, watching a video, etc. Please do ask questions. Just to give you a quick overview of web traffic, again, really important. Uh, I do this on most webinars, but even more so for this webinar uh, to understand the terminology. So we've got different types of traffic that comes to your website. Google Analytics is all about understanding the traffic that comes to your website. So how does that traffic come to your website? Well, it comes organically through natural search. Someone Googles you, whether it's your brand name, whether it's a product or service, finds you within the natural organic listings in Google, the ones that aren't paid for, the ones that aren't at the top, the ones that aren't sponsored. They might be in Google Maps. Those are organic. They find you, they click through, it's classed as organic traffic. They click an advert on Google. Maybe you're doing pay-per-click. That would be classed as paid traffic. They see an advert of yours. Maybe you are doing some display uh, or some remarketing and they see an advert across the uh, Google platform. That would be classed as display traffic if they click that and then get through to you. Social media, that would be where someone clicks a link on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, and gets to your website, classed as social traffic. Email marketing, email, email marketing. So someone receives a MailChimp email, a campaign monitor email, clicks the link, gets to you, it's classed as email traffic. Referral traffic, very important from an SEO point of view, also full of spam as well. So really two opposite things there. Um, so what you might find in your referral traffic is there's loads of spam. Uh, and that's very normal, unfortunately, in Google Analytics. Uh, but what it ultimately is, is where someone has seen you on another website, clicked the link and got through to you. And that's classed as uh, referral traffic. So they've seen you on a different website, maybe on the BBC, may, ideally. Maybe you're a solicitor and they've clicked on, and they're on the Law Society website. They click the link, get through to you, it's classed as referral. And then direct traffic is where they uh, literally just type your URL into the web browser, and that's classed as direct traffic. So they'd literally they'd type it exactly into the, the browser and get directly to you. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to change my screen share and I'm going to um, get directly into Google Analytics. So just bear with me one second whilst I just swap this over. Um, so if you do have questions at all and you're wanting to know something specific, please do ask. That's what I'm looking for. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, sorry, one sec. Okay, so um, Google Analytics looks a bit like this. Um, 
this is the once you've signed up for Google Analytics, this is the first screen that you get to once you're collecting data. Uh, and just need to bring up the chat box just so I can see if you've got questions. Okay, so um, this is the first screen you get to when you've when you're on Google Analytics. Okay, you've got some uh, data that's showing you what's happening right now on this website. So this is a, a national vets website. There's certain data I can show you, certain data I can't. Um, but I, everything you see, I'm allowed to show you. So um, there's eight users on the website right now. We've got uh, an overall. Uh, key metrics that we're looking at here. This is based on uh, the last seven days. So in the last seven days, you can see that drop down here. So we've got, uh, we can change that to a particular date range. We can look at the last month. We can also compare data as well. But in the last seven days, we can see that there's 5,800 users, there's 6,900 sessions. Let me explain the difference between a user and a session. So I'm a user. I might come to your website twice in the last seven days. So therefore there'll be two sessions, one user, two sessions, make sense? So here we can see that some users are coming back to the website more than once in a week. We've got a bounce rate, what's a bounce rate? Well, if you imagine lots of different pages across your website, and don't forget that people don't always land on your homepage, they could land on any page across your website. If they land on a page and then leave that page, then it's classed as a bounce. If they land on the page and go to another page, then whatever happens next, it's no longer a bounce. But the bounce is where they just visit one page and bounce straight back. Whether they click the back button, whether they go to a different website, whatever might happen, it's classed as a bounce. So here we've got a bounce rate of 59%. Some of you might start asking, well, is that good or bad? If you're a restaurant, okay, COVID, let's, uh, <laughs> forgetting COVID, if you're a restaurant, most people are literally looking for the telephone number or the address or the postcode. So it's very normal for people to bounce off a restaurant website. What you've got to understand is what's your website and what's the your industry and your sector. And maybe this is about looking at it on a weekly or monthly basis. So today it's 59% or January it's 59%. Okay, we want to reduce the bounce rate. So what's it going to be in February? What's it going to be in March? What's it going to be in April? And it's about understanding how uh, how things are progressing, really. The session duration, so that's how, that's how long someone's been on the website for. So here we can see it's 1 minute 41 seconds. Uh, we can see some data underneath showing us whether it's better or worse than the last seven days. So this is seven days compared to the last seven days. Inside uh, here, we've got a number of different things. I'm going to show you the admin panel first. So once you're... Um, is uh, in to Google Analytics, there's a setting button. So some of you might be familiar with this screen here. There's a, just a couple of key things that I'd say that are worth looking at in this screen. So one of the things, if you go to view settings, one of the things you want to do is make sure that the time zone set correctly, because that can make a big difference in terms of data. You also want to make sure that you've got the, whether it's HTTP or HTTPS set correctly. You also want to check the currency it's very annoying that Google Analytics don't automatically have this option ticked. So this option basically says, exclude all known robots and spiders from the data. Well, why would you want data that's got known robots and spiders? You, you just wouldn't. So, but Google doesn't automatically tick this box. So my advice is to go in and, and tick this box straight away. There's some more detailed stuff you could do in here. So for example, uh, this site search, um, if you've got a, a search box on your website and you do some and, and you allow people to search your website, then you can put some code into here that tells Google Analytics how your search box works. And what that can do is it can start tracking what people are typing in to your website. So, for example, if I uh, go to let's go to my website uh, and just do a quick uh, search. So if I just do, um, I've just done a search for nothing, very clever. Uh, so let's just do a search for blog, okay? So this would find all the um, all the things that are related to blog. But you can see in the URL here, it's a WordPress site, and you can see in the URL, it's got question S equals blog. So if you've got a WordPress site, all you'd actually do is take, oops, take this bit, and put it into there like that. 
That's all you'd do. And then Google Analytics would understand every time it sees that, and then would strip out the query, which is this bit. Every time it sees that, whatever word or phrase is after that is a search term. And it would then start tracking that data and putting it into Google Analytics. But we've gone complicated quite quickly there. So you don't need that on, okay? The next thing we need to consider is goals. And I'm going to come back to that shortly. Um, but though that that's a really important part. And it's something that uh, is, uh, you know, don't start using Google Analytics until you've set goals up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, help you understand why and what they are first. So if I go back to the home page, here's your, your quick set of data. If you've got a small website, then real time is very boring and not really worth looking at. If you've got a really big website, it's really fun and interesting. Um, it's showing you what's happening right now on this website. How many people are on the website, whether they're on mobile or desktop, um, what pages they're on, what locations they're in. So we can see here uh, the locations people are in. Uh, we can see what websites, that, what pages they're on uh, and, and, and what's going on. Uh, are they doing anything on the website as well? But I won't focus too much on real time because I'm guessing we've all not all got huge websites. The area that I spend uh, some of my time in is is audience and just the overview, um, actually. And this used to be the hot, the old home page of Google Analytics. I personally find it really helpful. Um, I like the the way it's displayed. Um, and I think uh, from a training point of view right now, it gives me uh, the ability to just show you some quick fundamental things about Google Analytics. So this date range at the top, this, this, this way this screen is laid out now is pretty much the way most screens in Google Analytics are laid out. So first of all, you know, I can decide, okay, well, I want to look at November. So I could pick the whole of November, click apply, and all the data below changes to November. What I might want to do is compare November to the previous year, November, November to November. So now we've got the data, but we've also got two sets of figures. So here we've got this year's November and last year's November, or 2020 and 19, should I say. And we can see it on the graph as well quite quickly. So we can see uh, how, how it is higher this November compared to last. It, in fact, it's 50% higher on users. Uh, we've got 46% higher on, on sessions. Um, but actually, the, um, uh, the, the time, uh, there we go, the time spent uh, has gone down. So it was 1 minute 58. It's now 1 minute 45. So we can see how the time's gone down. It's a complicated screen because we're comparing data. So let's just go back to November. So we've got November data there. We've got this graph. We're seeing it day by day. And we could hold a mouse. We can change this and we can look at week by week, which gives us a bit more of a an easier curve to look at. What we might want to do is look at the last year to this year or to, you know, let's take it to now. So let's go to today and click apply. We're in week view. If I go to day view, you can see lots of patterns. Go to week view. Or we could even go to month view. So we can see that over time, it looks like we've had some big rises since March, July, September, and then it started dropping off December, January, slightly. Okay. So that just gives you a, a bit of an idea. Now, the other thing that you can do is on here, no, most people don't see this button here, but this is the ability to add annotations. So for example, it, you know, there's, there's a dramatic change here. Why is the, dr the dramatic change? Okay, it was Christmas. Uh, let's have a look at this one here. Big change. Why was there a big step up? Did we do some, some activity? So we could start looking at the data to try and understand this. But at the same time, it's worth getting to know this and using it as a diary. So here, for example, I could put that on the uh, 7th of July, we did a TV advert. You might not be doing a TV advert. But on the, uh, the 5th of August, we did an email campaign. On the... Uh, 2nd of September, we did a huge, uh, uh, something uh, big on Twitter. Yeah. And you'll start seeing these little 
uh, annotations here. And what this can really help you understand is marrying this against the data. So you can see a jump, you click on it, you see what this is. So it's quite handy to start using that um, and, uh, and, and thinking about how you could, uh, how that might be able to help you. Okay. Don't know if we have any questions so far, but please feel free to ask, by the way. Just double checking. No, okay. So we've got the users, we've got new users, which is um, people that uh, Google Analytics hasn't seen before. We've got the number of sessions. That's how many times each user has come back in this time period. We've got the number of sessions per user, the number of pages they've looked at. So obviously they don't just look at one page. In fact, here it's telling us that they look on average 2.13 pages per session. We've got the time they spend and the bounce rates. Let's just look at a bit more detail. So one of the things inside Google Analytics, it has uh, demographics and interests. Now these are based on what Google's on Google's own data. So if you've got a Google account and you're signed in, then Google knows who you are and obviously has data on you, your search history, your age, your sex, all sorts of different things. But again, Google doesn't automatically turn this feature on. So if you get into this screen and it's not on, there'll be an enable button. So my advice is to go into the demographics and go into the interests. I think if you enable one, it enables the other. The interest is based on your uh, search history. So what this is basically saying is that, you know, uh, a good 4% are, are into food and dining, followed by 3.47%, which are TV lovers. Uh, we can also get uh, data on, you know, is it uh, what gender people are looking at? It's obviously only data based on people that are signed into Google, of course. But we've got, uh, we can see that 61% are female that come to this website compared to 38% that are male. So you can see quite a difference there. So you might start thinking about the, the type of content, the style of content. Uh, Laura, new users to your site, not new to Google. That's correct, yeah. New users to your site, that's correct. So the other thing that I would look at is uh, location. So in Geo, we've got location here. And we can have a look, uh, for example, at where people come from. So here we've got some data. Um, we've got 92% uh, come from the UK. Uh, they're only based in the UK, so a lot of this traffic is spammy, non-relevant, uh, all sorts of, of stuff that's, that's not very relevant, um, that people have just stumbled across this website. But what we're really interested in is the, is the UK data. So we could click into that, and it goes into, into a deeper level. And here it splits it up into uh, England, Scotland, Wales. We could click City. So if we click City, we're now at a deeper level where we've got London, Birmingham, Liverpool, Leeds in order of users, but we can change the orders as well. We've got the different bounce rates. So here we can see that London, 63% of people bounce compared to only 42% in Liverpool. Well, they have a practice in Liverpool, but they don't have a practice in London. So that would be one reason. We can see the time spent, 1 minute 31 in London, 2 minutes 12 in Leeds in, in Liverpool, uh, Liverpool, whatever I said. Um, at this point, it's worth saying that you could get heavily bogged down with data here. So you've got to really decide what are the things that I'm trying to find out? What are the things that are meaningful to my business? And what are the things that I want to measure each month to try and increase or reduce or, or whatever that might be? So we've got the, um, the the number of users, we've got the the uh, bounce rate, we've got the average time. Those are those are sort of some of the key metrics that I tend to look at. Okay, um, what we can uh, also do is we can have a look at the technology they're using. So if we look at their browser, the browsers that people are using here, we can see that most people are using Safari, forty six percent. Don't forget, Safari is also on iPhones and iPads, so that that's why sometimes that data is a bit higher. Uh, we've got Chrome, 39%, Samsung Internet, etc. We can also have a look at what uh, mobile device they're using. So if I click devices, we can see here, just give it a moment to load. I'm just going to reduce this uh, data set down. So do, 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 which will just speed it up a bit. Okay, so here we can see uh, 
well, first of all, sorry, I should have shown you the overview so that we can see that on this particular website, 71% of traffic is on mobile compared to only, um, I'll make this bigger as well for you, shall I? Uh, only 24% on desktop, 4% on tablet. We can then go into the devices and we can have a look at the devices that people are using. Uh, so this helps us understand how our website should work on different devices. You know, is it important that the website works on the Apple iPad, for example? Well, actually, only 3% of all uh, mobile traffic, mobile and tablet traffic, is on the iPad. So do we need to spend a lot of time on that? Let's have a look at, you know, do they bounce? Do they, how long do they spend on the site? And if I was to go back a step onto the um, uh, the technology in the browser, you know, some people might say, well, you know, your website does not work on, on Internet Explorer. Okay, well, that's 0.88% of traffic. And then we can go into the detail and we can also have a look at the uh, version number. So here we can see the versions. Ah, actually for the first time in a long time, I'm only seeing version 11. Sometimes you've got some data here from, you know, really old internet explorers. And it's like, you know, it doesn't work on IE6. Yeah, well, IE6 is no longer allow around and, you, we, and it's like less than a minute percent. So it helps you understand whether it's worth spending money on fixing things or not. So that's how I might use some of this data. Now, all of this data that I've been showing you, if I go back to, um, let's say, go back to mobile device, all of this data that I'm showing you, we've got the the, the users, the sessions, the bounce rate, the average set, uh, time. But the big thing that I've not talked about yet is this on the right-hand side. So here, We've got what's actually happening. What what are they, are we are we getting what we want? Okay. Now this could be based on sales. So maybe you've got an e-commerce website and you're literally just trying to sell stuff. So therefore, you'd bring e-commerce tracking onto Google Analytics, and you'd and and the, is it does anyone uh, is anyone got any products on their website doing e-commerce? Just pop a uh, e-com in the uh, in the chat if you are. Uh, and I'll just and I'll go into that a bit more detail in a second. Um, but either way, whether you're selling something or whether whether you're whether it's a product and it, and it's e-commerce or or not, you still need to tell Google Analytics what you're wanting people to do. So, is it fill out a form? Is it uh, uh, is it um, uh, click the phone number? Is it buy a product? Whatever those things are, and and it's at this stage that we tell uh, Google Analytics. So. Let me just explain a bit more. So there are a couple of you that are in e-commerce. So just to clarify, if you go to the settings button here, uh, you can then go to um, e-commerce settings and you can turn this on. Now this this website in particular doesn't sell online. So they don't, they haven't got this on. But if you turn this on, uh, I'll just show you in there, there's nothing that, uh, that intricate. Uh, this is, you know, getting into heavy data. Uh, I'd probably suggest that at this stage, you really don't need this. Um, but this this will pull in all sorts of things like what the product was, what the price was, what the postage was, how many uh, things were in the basket, what the average basket was. So it pulls in a load of data just with this button. But you also need your developer to add some code onto the checkout page. So on the checkout page, it basically has all that data or the, the, the final checkout page, the, the, the pain, the, the thank you page has all the data. It says, thanks for buying. And on there, it says, you know, you bought three t-shirts and, you know, it was $5.99 postage. There's a bit of code you add to that page that then hooks back to Google Analytics and says success. Here's the basket and the details. So that's how you set e-commerce tracking up. But what I also want to do is focus on goal tracking. So how do you set up that um, someone has filled out a form, for example? Well, there's unfortunately lots of different ways and I, and I could get quite bogged down in this and it's really difficult to help you all. Um, my advice is to just Google, uh, Google Analytics uh, goal tracking talk to your developer, share this page with them and have a conversation about, okay, you know, I'm trying to track this form. I'm trying to track this, this thing. How do we track it? Now, if you take people to a thank you page after filling out a form, for example, it is actually really easy. And I do want to show you that. I don't suggest the templates. Um, I don't suggest the smart goal. Really avoid the smart goal. It's basically good analytics, making up a load of data and thinking that all's good. Uh, I don't suggest any of that. So my advice is to go to custom. And then 
if, if it's a thank you page, so you fill out a form on your contact us, and then once you fill it out, they get to a thank you page. Brilliant, nice and easy to track. So it's, it's a, you know, filled out the form, whatever, okay? It's, they're going to a thank you page. So if they get to thank you, whatever the page is, thank you, whatever, doesn't really matter how I spell it, if, as long as it's right. <laughs> whatever the page is, put it in there, and then click save. So that is basically saying to Google, if someone gets to the thank you page, well, the only way they could have got there is filling out a form. So therefore they fill out a form. Now you could take this up a step and you could add a value. So what you could turn around and work out is how many people fill out your contact forms and but more so when they fill it out and when you speak to them what's the chance of them converting and how much do they normally spend so for example if you could turn around and say well you know out of every 10 that thank you forms that we get five of them convert and on average they spend a hundred pounds each or a thousand pounds or ten thousand pounds whatever it might be so half convert and on average they spend a hundred pound each so what we could say is each form is worth 50 pounds yeah each form is worth 50 pounds because half of them will convert and half of them will spend a hundred pounds so i could put here for every time that someone gets to a thank you page it's worth 50 pounds to me this is where you start understanding the return on investment and you need to go into some into quite some detail here. So what's a phone call worth to me? What's someone subscribing to my email list worth? What would I pay for that? Would I pay a pound, two pound, three pound? What's it worth? What's it worth knowing that someone's watched a 60 minute video? What's it worth knowing that uh, someone has clicked email and sent you an email? Now, some of these might be, you know, you might put 50p on them, you might put a pound on them. But at the same time, if you understand that half convert and when they do convert, they spend, you know, a substantial amount, let's put that amount in because that's where you really get to the, the proper detail and, and really, really get to where Google Analytics can, can really help you. So, and the reason being is that if I now go back to uh, the data. So on the left hand side here, and I go back to uh, the, you know, the, the um, let me let me jump into something. So I'll, I'll, I'll come back out of it in a second. But let's just for argument's sake, say you were doing some kind of Facebook advertising. Okay, I don't know if there's much on here, but let's have a quick look. Um, and here we've got so Facebook, okay. You could go to the right hand side and instantly you could see, right, okay, well, Facebook has brought us in 95 pounds. The actions that have happened from someone clicking a link on Facebook, doing some stuff on the website, it's converted into 15 goals being scored, 15 things that have happened. And that's been, that's worth 95 pounds. Now, I don't think this was a Facebook campaign because it's a very small number. But you could easily say, well, you know, at some point you could say, well, okay, well, it cost me, you know, 20 pounds to do this campaign and I've made 95. Or it cost me three grand to do this campaign and I've made 95. So that is where it suddenly becomes very meaningful. And I think you absolutely have to set goals up. Now, just to go a bit more complicated for just a second. There's something called events in Google Analytics. Events are um, a bit like goals. They are tracking things that happen. Someone's clicked this, someone's... It's where an action has typically happened. So they've scrolled past this point, they've been onto this page, they've um, clicked this link, they've watched this video. What you can do is set up events and and they can then in turn become goals. So, so a goal, you know, the goal might not be, let's, let's give you an example. You're an e-commerce site, you're taking them from adding something to the cart to then filling out their address, to then, uh, um, you know, uh, adding their details, to then paying. So what you want to do is, the goal is them paying, of course, but the events are the lead up to that. So you might want to track the lead up to that and understand how many people are getting to each stage and how many people are dropping off each stage. 
I'll give you another example. Maybe you've got a quiz or some kind of calculator on your website. You could, you could use event tracking to track how many questions people answer or how many boxes people fill in. The goal is if they actually click the submit button. So events are sometimes used to help you track goals. And I, it's impossible to go into to, to much more detail right now, but just bear in mind that you can track all sorts of different stuff. And that event tracking is in behavior down here and inside events. So you can have a look at what events have happened on this website. And this only tracks things that have happened. So here we can see that people have, th this does have events uh, set up. So people have opened pop-ups, people have clicked things. We've told it what we're looking at. And then we might have used some of that to say to uh, Google, okay, well, actually, this is the goal. So here, just very briefly, we could go into that goal. And instead of clicking, uh, it's a uh, destination that they've gone to a thank you page, we might say, actually, an event's happened and what that event is. So just trying to show you how that ties up. Do I have any questions? Would donations be cast, counted as e-commerce? Yes. Yeah, I think they would. Yeah. Yeah. Financial transaction. I think it definitely would. Uh, okay. So let me just take you into acquisition, which is a, which is probably where I spend the most time. So if I go into all traffic and then channels, we start looking at the, where the, the, the data's come from. So here we can see organic search, direct social referral, etc. And if we click into each of these, we've got some details. So if we click into social, you saw a moment ago, we can see we've got Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, etc. And then we've got the data alongside. And more importantly, we've got the goals, really important. And if you don't have it set up, it's just not worth it. I don't think it's worth spending any time in Google Analytics because you're not really understanding if they've if you've achieved something. What this helps you do is it helps you look at the data and say, if I go back to channels here, it helps me look at the data and I can see, well, okay, you know, here, di people that come direct to us, 7.4% of them convert into a goal. Great. On organic search, search engine optimization, 5.64% convert. And here's, here's the conversion, here's the amount. On social media, only 2.68% convert. So we can see where we need to be spending the time. We can see, um, you know, actually, right, referral websites, we've got a 5% conversion. Okay, let's have a look at who's referring us. Let's go into there, see which websites are referring us. And here we can see some websites. Now, unfortunately, as I said, you will get some spam in here. And at the bottom here, we can change the number of rows. So here we've got one uh, to 10, but it goes to 71. We could change that to show, you know, 100 on a page. And here we can see all of the, the different things. But as, as you go down, you will start seeing some spam. Just ignore it. doesn't really matter. What we're seeing, though, is Vet Help Direct is sending 82 people and is giving us a 2% conversion rate. Here, Yahoo giving us a 10% conversion rate. Three Best Trusted giving us a 6% conversion rate. Now, I potentially, as a marketing manager, would be thinking, okay, well, how can we create a better relationship with Three Best Rated? because they're giving us a high percentage. And in fact, they're 13% on yell.com. Who knew people still used yell.com? Only 36 people, but look at the conversion rate. So this that that's the sort of thing that it helps you. And, and some of these decisions might be wrong, they might be right, but it helps you focus on some of the things that you, that you need to be thinking about and talking about. If you do connect Search Console up, then that will that data will be in here, and that shows you all the data that's sort of prior to Google Analytics, uh, and uh, uh, and so that would be here. Um, this is something that you should understand. So uh, campaigns. So with Google Analytics, you can set you can use something called um, campaign URL builder. Okay, there's a lot to take in here. I understand this campaign URL builder. I should have written. Now, all this is, it's really simple, okay? <laughs> but what it does is it allows you to track links. So if you, here's a very good example. Let's say you send out uh, an email campaign, okay? Now, as standard, those emails are not tracked unless you tell the software to track it. So for example, with MailChimp, if you Google 
MailChimp, Google Analytics, uh, you, there will be a tick box or some integration that you can turn it on. But imagine I'm just sending you an email and, I, and let's say I'm sending it to 100 people, okay? And I want to see how many people click the link. So I'm going to send you these slides. The, I'm going to send you this video afterwards and I'm going to track it to see how many people click the link and more so what you do if and when you get to my website. Wouldn't that be interesting? So what you can do is you can take that link. So let's just, for example, Let's just take, for argument's sake, I was taking you to my homepage, okay? So I put the homepage in there. You don't need this tool, by the way. You just have to understand how it works, but you absolutely don't need the tool. Just understand how it works. So we've got source and medium here. Let me just show you what that means inside Google Analytics. So if I go back to all traffic, go to channels. In fact, if I go to source and medium, it'll be an easier screen to help understand that. So here we've got the source is Google, the medium is organic, the source is direct, the medium is non. The source, uh, let's let's just have a look. For example, let's just make this deeper. So here we've got um, here's the referral traffic, but the source is the website. Okay. You see that? And we could, and I could also do a search on here as well. So I could do a search for all social. Let's see the, uh, or oh, sorry, Twitter. So here I can see the, oh, why is that not working? Okay, so here I can see all the Facebook traffic across their desktop uh, and mobile platforms. Uh, and, and I can see that it's all referral and there's no social in there for some reason. Why is there no social? Uh, why is it clusters referral? Let's just go back to channels a second. One sec, let's go into social. So here we've got the uh, social networks. Um, and if I bring the source and medium in to the social, yeah, we can see, well, I'm not showing you what I was wanting to show you. Um, <laughs> let me go, uh, back a step to here here for a second so let me just not complicate it so the so this is the name of the place and this is the sort of the 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 the, the channel okay so let's just so let's go back to this so I, i'm gonna um i'm gonna send you this link and i'm gonna send it from my you know let's say outlook and the medium the channel is email okay it might be that i'm gonna tweet it so i'm gonna put it on twitter and I'm gonna, and it's, and therefore it's social. You, for clarity, you could actually put whatever you want here. It doesn't really matter. But if you want it to tie in really well with Google Analytics data, then if you put the actual name, so you know, I'm sending it as a, it's a newsletter or it's Outlook. The key thing is that in the medium, it's one of those first slides that I showed you. So it's either email, organic, paid, referral. Those are the key things, email, organic, paid, referral, okay? So it's email, I'm gonna send it out and it's email, okay? You have to put a campaign name. So we're gonna put the campaign name as it's the Google Analytics training for one Yorkshire uh, and it's January 21. That's just something that means something to me, nothing else. What that does is it creates a link, okay? I know that I've just lost some people in the last few minutes and I apologize. Let me just recap. This is to track if I sent if I want to if I want to share a link somewhere and I want to track exactly what happens. This is how to do it. So I put it into here. I can put whatever I want in source and medium. It doesn't really matter. And I'll be honest with you. This is the key thing. What's the name of it? Okay. If you want to go a step further, it's really handy handy having this correct as well. But this is the real big one. I know it's the Google Analytics One Yorkshire Training January twenty one. It creates the link. All it does is it puts a question mark. UTM source is the newsletter. That's what I typed above. It puts the UTM medium as the email and it puts the UTM campaign as that name. So now I don't share the uh, homepage link. I share this entire link. So this is the link that I share, okay? Now, if I was to visit that link with all that code afterwards, you'll see that it still takes me to my homepage. So for the user, it works perfectly, but it's also got all that tracking. What that does is it populates 
campaigns here. So all the campaigns are typically email marketing, typically paid campaigns, things that you've shared and you've added some tracking to it. So here we can see, uh, you know, if I get, if I was to change the date range and go back a long way, we could see some email campaigns inside here. But these are things that have been tracked. So at some point, someone's created a URL and they've added uh, the flea and worm treatment or whatever it was to the end of the URL to track if someone was going to click that link. And then we can see what's happened when they've got to the site and what they've done. So I do apologize if I've just lost a few people there, but I think it's important to, to, to know that you can do stuff like that. As I said, you don't need the tool to do it. You just need to understand how it's, how it's done. So if you want to write that yourself, you can do. To be clear, you can have anything in any of these fields, jargon, you can have total jargon. This is the one that helps you understand what it, the campaign is. So that's something meaningful to you. And this is the one that is meaningful to Google. So if it's something that Google uses, it really helps pigeonhole the data in the right place. So that was campaigns. Um, I'm going to go into behavior quickly. So here we've got the site content. So we talk about pe landing pages are the pages that people land on. Exit pages are the people where they leave your site. So it's about understanding, okay, well, which are the best, which are our landing pages? So here we can see most people visit the uh, home page. That just that line there is the home page. And then this helps us understand which are our most popular pages across the website and what's happening. So the bounce rates, the average time, do they actually uh, convert into a goal? if they land on that page. So here, for example, what's interesting is we can see that if they land on the King's Heath practice page, the chances are a 13% conversion rate um, compared to if they land on the home page. So what we know is we need to get them to the practice pages instead of the home page because we can see there's a big difference there. Likewise, this one's lead round hey. Again, if we can get into that page, it's a 12% conversion compared to only an 8% if they come to the home page. So this is where the data becomes more meaningful. We can see what pages people leave on. So it helps us understand was the content right or actually did they just get what they wanted? That's just a question you've got to ask yourself. That's probably the, the, the key area to look at in here. And the only other thing to say on landing pages is what we could do is we could add a secondary dimension. So we could say, okay, well, we're only interested in uh, the, um, uh, what we want to do is understand how people have got to that homepage. So here we can see that um, more people got to the homepage through Google, then direct, uh, and then, you know, we can expand this and look further. Or what we might want to do is have a look at the, we, there's a vacancies, jobs area, careers area on the website. So maybe we want to have a look at that careers pages. So here we've got all the careers pages. Yeah, but we can see how they've got there. So there's like this secondary dimension that I've added, going to secondary dimension, and I've typed in the source and medium, and I can see the vacancies page, and I can see how people got to that page and what's happened when they've got there as well. I could change that that uh, secondary uh, dimension to uh, the city. So here I can see that uh, for the vacancy page, the most visits were from Ashburn. Was that in, is that in Kent? And then San Jose, <laughs> great. America, is that? Uh, and then, and as we uh, expand the data, we can have a look and see uh, where people are coming from. Now, if you find, once you've added this uh, secondary dimension, and I've done a search as well, didn't I? I did a search for careers. So now I've sort of created a bespoke page here, showing me some data, showing me some data on uh, uh, city, but also on just the careers pages. Well, what you can do is you can save this. So I can save it so that next time I come to Google Analytics, it's dead easy to find. So this is the careers by, excuse my spelling because I'm running out of time, by country, uh, by city, wasn't it? And I can save that. And where it goes is in my customization saved reports. So if I click saved reports, I can see this one that I created just now. And very quickly, I can get to a page that's got exactly what I was looking for. It's got the cities and it's got, it's only showing me the careers. So that's a really, really good, useful feature, that save button. The other useful feature is this export button. So here we can export by PDF uh, or Excel or Google Sheets. And then 
we can also look at the share button. And why this is good is because you can automate some reports. So once a week, uh, I can send myself an email. Uh, that's the name of the report. Uh, I want uh, an Excel sheet. Uh, I want it uh, weekly. And I want it on the Tuesday of every week. And just, just to remind yourself, Johnny, this is what you want and this is why you want it. Yeah. <laughs> so I could set that up and automate it so that I receive this in an Excel sheet or this in a PDF. And it would be exactly that page. It would be everything that's everything that's set on that page. So the the uh, the search, the secondary dimension, the date would change based on uh, it being every week or every month um but the uh but that's 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 something that i can do and don't forget we can change this to change the view we can add annotations those annotations will be visible throughout every single channel and likewise we can all we've also got our goals or our e-commerce on the right hand side i can see the time i'm running out of time um the last section to show you is the goals so here we've got uh, all the things that have happened. So if I go to the overview, this website's got all sorts of goals set up. It's about uh, 12 goals set up and we're tracking uh, lots of different things. We've given different values to each goal and it gives us a site, an overall site goal conversion of 5.85. It's got the value. So in there we can see, you know, in the month of uh, October and November, the two months together, we've got a goal value of what the website is driving. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I realize it's been a quite a whistle-stop tour. Uh, Alexis, do you only get this level of information once you've added the code to each page? Yes. I'm assuming yes, so that, that means you won't get any historical data. I'm afraid uh, that that's right. You do not get any historical data whatsoever. And so the sooner you can get Google Analytics installed on your website, the better, um, because you can't backdate it. But the second thing to do once you've got uh, Analytics installed is to make sure that you are adding the goal tracking so that the data actually becomes meaningful. Um, it's a lot to get in an hour here, and I've only just touched the surface. Um, hopefully it's been helpful and hopefully it's uh, it's just given you a bit more direction. Uh, please don't jump off because I've just got a couple of things that I need to share with you. Uh, if you do have any final questions, then now's the time to, to uh, quickly put them in the chat or contact me afterwards because I'll happily help you. Um, for more One Yorkshire sessions, go to the YorkshireMafia.com events. Please don't go until I've finished, if that's all right. I'll only keep you for a minute. Um, if you uh, fancy becoming a listener on my podcast, I'd love you to be a listener. Just head over to uh, this link, podcast.fleet.marketing forward slash listen. Uh, and you can find my podcast on one of your favorite platforms, podcast.fleet.marketing forward slash listen. And we've also got a Facebook group, the Yorkshire Business Club. If you search the Yorkshire Business Club on Facebook, you'll find a great networking and learning group. And you'll find me if you want to ask me direct questions or head over to me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, the reason I've kept you is because when this closes, it's going to send you to a uh, poll. And I'd just love you to just quickly fill that out to tell me what you thought of this session. I want to learn. Give me the good and bad. Um, and uh, and I'll make it even better next time. Uh, and it's and and that's you know my way of learning. That's your way of paying me back, really. So thank you very much indeed. Uh, I hope this has been helpful, and I look forward to seeing you all again at one of the next one Yorkshire sessions. Uh, and uh, all take care, and see you all soon. And have a great day. <laughs>